Um, up next, Alex Moore, CEO of Baden. Uh, the hockey stick myth, the truth about growth via email, SEO, and app stores. Wow, really? All in 20 minutes? All right. We'll see where we go. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I want to talk about the sexiest thing you're going to see all day today, a little bit of calculus. Um, no. <laughs> It's all graphs, y'all will have an easy time. So um, I'm the CEO of Baden, we're an email productivity company, and uh, as a company that's, that's built our business by adding buttons into Gmail and Outlook, we definitely disagree with Jason's comments. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to Joseph because I don't actually have any pictures of our product in our deck, but he had one, the send later button inside of his Gmail, that's all us. So thank you very much for, for showing everybody what we do indirectly. So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about what your early stage growth should look like and some of the techniques and tactics that we've used to boost that over time. And uh, I want to start by saying if you're a VC, um, possibly including Dave, you might want to put your fingers in your ears because I might, I might make your brain explode. Because um, VCs kind of divide the world into two types of companies and they do it based on these, these user graphs. And they, they see it as, okay, you're either an exponentially growing hockey stick and, and in that case you're the next Facebook, you're the new hotness we are in or you're this lifestyle business that's growing linearly and yawn and whatever. The problem is, you know, in, in the early stage... By, the, of your by the way, there's only one type of VCs, and that's the ones that exactly behave the way that you just mentioned. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, the, the problem is that your startup user base should not look like either of these unless you're either an ultra-viral free consumer app like, you know, mobile messaging app number seven, um, in, in which case, why are you here? you're not unsexy, or something is going wrong. So let me try to explain a little bit about why. So let's take a look of a real, at a real world example, Amazon, the fastest growing retailer ever. So that's Amazon's revenue graph since they went public in 1997 and the data became available. So you take a look at that and you try to, to curve fit it into one of these two, uh, these two types of growth graphs. And you, know, you look at a linear line, you know, just draw a line between those two points, and it's obviously not linear growth. But then if you take a look at it and, and curve fit it to an exponential growth graph, it's not really that either. You can see that it does not line up. And that becomes really, really clear if you project out Amazon's growth over the next couple of years. If Amazon had true exponential growth, their revenue would be the orange line. What they're actually projecting is the green one. So the math doesn't work for Amazon. Of course, we're not Amazon. Um, we're, we're a lot smaller than that. And it doesn't, but it doesn't work for us either. And so this is Boomerang's user growth over the last three years. Boomerang will turn three on Sunday. And you can see that it, it's not a line, but it's also not exponentially growing, and it's messy. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that there's something besides just viral user growth that's going on that's, dry, that's the primary growth factors for our business and for Amazon's too, and probably for all of yours. And what that should be is that the dominant factor in your early user growth should be discovery and saturation of marketing channels. So let's do a little bit more, a little bit more math here. Let's say that you start your business and you launch and you find as your first customer acquisition channel, you find an AdWords campaign. Gets you 500 users a month. After a month, you say, I've optimized this as much as I can, this is good. And you move on to something else. You add a Facebook ad. But you don't stop running your AdWords campaign. You just find something else. And the next, next month you do something else. You find a slide share presentation that gets you some traffic. The next month you add some SEO landing pages. Then the next month you say, you know what, the Facebook ads we have, they're not good enough, and you tweak them. And you get some more lift there. So what happens is you cascade these different marketing channels. You try them out, you find out how well they're working, you optimize them, you make them better, and then they keep going, and they keep going, and they keep going. So even if you add in a 15% month over month growth, which is not too shabby in a SaaS business, what you see is if you integrate over that, the one piece of calculus we are going to do. Integrate over your delta of users, you get your total users, and what you end up with is a polynomial-shaped growth curve. Hooray! Okay, so that was a really simplified example. Now I want to go into some specifics, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what we've seen over time. So this is actually Boomerang's daily new user graph. At the moment in time, we're running a low six figures of, of new annual signups every month. And you can see that it's super, super, super spiky, super, super noisy. There's not a whole lot you can tell from looking at it, but I do want to make one point. You can see that it kind of spiked up at launch, and we kind of got a, a baseline layer of daily traffic. Another spike, higher baseline. Another spike, higher baseline. And what you'll see is that it continues to do that over time. You'll see, you'll do something marketing related. It'll give you an initial spike of traffic, 
and then you'll see a continuing lift in your user growth numbers. So this is not total users, this is daily new users. So this is a little too noisy to see it real clearly, but this is what it looks like if you kind of smooth that curve out. And you can still see some spikes in there, but you can also see a general trend upward driven by large spiky events. So what I want to spend the rest of my time talking about is some of the channels that actually are the causes of those drivers for us. Is that everybody kind of following along, or have I lost everybody at this point? That's actually my last slide. Um, if your product sucks, it will not be retained. And I have a product that sucks, and it's not retained. So if I get to the end of the end, I'll show you what that looks like. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> All right, so we've had four channels that I, that I want to talk about that work really well for us. The first one's Chrome Web Store. Second one's email marketing. Third one is some content marketing. We released a really awesome infographic that went viral on Mashable. And then some SEO landing pages that have been our latest marketing effort. So if there's one person here you should talk to if you're on the web, you should go out there, you should probably leave my talk at this point, and go out there and talk to Joe Marini over in the corner because he's one of the guys who runs the Chrome Web Store. Chrome Web Store is an awesome traffic source. Three years ago, we got featured in the Chrome Web Store, not at the very top, but you know, kind of in the middle of the front page. Got 12,000 signups a day back when the Chrome Web Store was a tenth the size it is now. Once that, once that stopped happening, once we stopped getting featured, the Chrome Web Store continued to drive 400 new installs, or 400 new active users every single day since the beginning of time. And you know, when we were just getting started, that was an awful lot of users that we didn't have to pay anything for. So if you've got an opportunity to get your product into an app store, even if you have to do some work to do it, even if you have to integrate with an API that may not make 100% sense, but that you can do pretty quickly, get in the app store. It's a huge driver. Second thing I want to talk about is our email marketing. Um, so we sent an email out, actually the largest spike in our growth graph, go back here, that really, really tall one was the day that we converted our service from free to paid. Not exactly what you'd expect, but we sent an email that, you know, that humanized this and described, you know, we, we put this image at the bottom of it. We're like, we're just trying to make it so that we can build a sustainable business. And we announced some new features. Sending that email, aside from that day, Going forward, we saw a 55% lift in our direct traffic before and after we sent the email. Huge, and that continued on basically forever. Um, other emails that we've sent have seen equally good lifts. These are often the, the ones that are 55, 24, and 18 are new feature announcements. So if you build something new, make sure you email your user base. But we've saw, seen 12% lift in, in you know, direct traffic, people who come to our website just by typing it in the browser bar after just sending an email that had a couple of tips on how to use the product better. If you, if you can engage your user base, they will share your product, you'll see more word of mouth signups. If there's one tip I can tell you besides go see Joe, send more high quality email to your users. If you're not doing it at least once every probably six weeks, you should be emailing your users more often. A third thing that we had pretty good success with was content marketing. We, uh, we're in the email world, so we have a whole lot of data about what, what kind of factors influence response rates and a bunch of other really useful stuff that people want to know about how to use their email better. So we put together an infographic. I basically went down into the database for four days and dug out some really cool nuggets, and we hired a graphic designer to help us out and put together, the, uh, put together this infographic. The thing went viral and mashable. We saw 25,000 visits to our site from the infographic um, for you know, not a whole heck of a lot of, of investment. Um, the one downside to this is we didn't see a whole heck of a lot of sticking power. We don't continue to get a whole lot of traffic from this. It was kind of a one-time event. It lasted for about a week and a half, and then it kind of tapered off. Finally, we've been working lately on uh, building some SEO landing pages. And um, so we found a handful of keywords that using AdWords as a keyword tool and using SEO Moz's technology to, to help us figure out which ones were competitive. We built a few landing pages. We seeded traffic to those pages with AdWords just so we could test conversion. And then what we did is we took a look at the, um, at the search terms that people were using to actually find our landing pages. And we found a couple of really interesting ones. We found that, for example, we tried to get follow-up on an email. And we didn't win for that. But what we did win for is follow-up after a job interview. And so that continues to drive traffic to this day. We got a, a sign up a couple of months ago from somebody who said, hey, you know, one of our incoming applicants said they used Boomerang when they were applying for our, job, for, for our job, and they spread it throughout their whole company. So take a look at the keywords that people are really using to find you, and adjust your landing pages accordingly. This is also great because it's fixed cost. Once you've built the landing pages, traffic continues forever. And I can show you what that looks like. 
since we launched the landing pages, traffic has gone from you know, 500 visits a month all the way up to low tens of thousands. And it just happens organically. So the thing that makes marketing really hard is because what I've shown you are four channels that worked reasonably well for us. There's a ton of other channels we tried that didn't work worth a damn. We tried video, and we ran, we, we, you know, we put together some videos, we couldn't get them to go viral, so we figured, well, let's at least pay for traffic. Got 8,000 views on a video, absolutely unmeasurable difference in our site traffic. No difference between day one and day two. We tried display ads. Only 4% of the people who clicked any of our display ads converted, no matter what we did. I think they were all accidental clicks. We tried AdWords, and that didn't work very well for us either, because what we found is the high enough traffic volume keywords, we were already getting those. And then, you know, to try to get into things that were tangentially related, the conversion wasn't worth a darn. So that didn't work for us. We tried Facebook ads, and while we got tons and tons of traffic from the third world, we couldn't get any traffic at all at, at low cost from places where, you know, customers actually pay for our products. Then we also tried buying a bunch of domains. We got gmailextensions.com. We got all kinds of other stuff like that. Nobody goes to them, and they don't have good page rank because the sites are too new and too crappy for Google to, to index them. So you're going to find that a lot of things don't work. But the, the, click, there we go. But the mechanics of actually trying to build a polynomial growth machine are really, really easy. You just pick a customer acquisition channel, and if you need examples beyond mine, go to Dave's um, R metrics for pirates. He's got a slide in there with 50 customer acquisition channels on it. Pick whichever one looks promising, whichever one you've got some ideas about, and then spend at least a month running experiments on it. Because until you spend a month digging into a customer acquisition channel, you don't know what you have yet. Um, at the end of the month, measure the results. And you know, you, you gotta put, you gotta do a little bit of a thumb in the wind kind of thing. You gotta say, I think this is showing more promise. You know, I'm gonna spend some more time on it. But measure the results and see what you've got. If you've got a channel where you're spending you know, 15 cents to acquire a customer, my God, ramp up the spending. Um, you know, if you've got a channel where, like our video, where you can't even measure the traffic lift, stop investing in that channel and just shut it off. Or if you've saturated the channel, move on to a different one and keep the campaign running. Pick a different customer acquisition channel and move on. Cool. Um, how am I on time? I have a couple minutes? Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and skip on to the two cases where your growth may look different. First one is if you're raising money. If you can claim exponential growth, that's gonna make a big difference in your ability to impress a VC. Not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them. So if you need to do this, your lever to do that's the marketing budget. If you, want, if you want to spend more money to acquire customers, you can almost do that, you can almost always do that, although it may be unprofitable to do so. So if you're trying to raise a round, it may be worth losing a little bit of money on customers in order to sustain growth momentum and make it look like things are going, accelerating the way that the VCs like to see it go. But when you do this, don't buy into it. Don't believe your own bullshit. Know that you're doing it as a, a prop to raise money and that you're, you know, if, you're, if, you're long or if your lifetime value does not exceed your cost of customer acquisition, stop doing that as soon as you're done trying to impress somebody. Second case is if your shit don't work. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Or just don't do it. If you, uh, so this is one of our products that has not hit product market fit. But you can see we've invested some time and effort on marketing for it. That was a screw up. If you don't have product market fit, what you're going to see is you're going to see a spike, and then you're going to see it drop. Then you're going to see a spike and a drop. Spike, drop, spike, drop. What, what's going on with this product is we have a 2% retention rate after six months. So that means that we, if we pay to get 100 users to our site, only two of them are going to stick around after six months. There's no point in marketing this product because we don't keep the users. So if you've got a, a growth graph that looks like that, and you know, the TechCrunch article is always going to spike up and drop, but if you're not seeing a flat line after that, if you're seeing a continued decline, 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 that means you're, you haven't found product market fit. So start doing customer development. Go talk to your customers. Look at your metrics and find out why it's not working rather than trying to grow a product that, where, where there's no point, where the users aren't, aren't going to engage with it anyway. And that's all I got. Um, one last thing. If your growth does not look polynomial, you should draft or hire someone to focus on marketing because you're leaving customers on the table, you're leaving revenue on the table, and you can be doing better. Thank you. Cool. I've got time for one question. Yep. 
Yeah, so his question was, what are the characteristics of the emails we sent that made them uh, the most high quality? It's a really great question. Um, I'm kind of pedantic, um, as you may have noticed from the talk. Um, so I like to talk a lot. And so our emails that have done the best have actually been eternally long, um, super conversational, and they have lots and lots of conversion opportunities in them. So one of the things you're doing when you're emailing your customer base is re-engaging churned users, folks who've dropped off. For example, you know, they changed browsers and forgot to install Boomerang. Um, and then we also have done better when we've included the ability to share the email directly. So we put tweet buttons inside the email that say, hey, Boomerang just announced customizable menus. And so that drives kind of a second layer of traffic, too. Um, the one other piece of advice I'd say is try to make it like a dialogue with your users. At least that's our, that's our company personality. So we find that when we write to our users as if, hey, we're just going to have a conversation with you, that that works really well as opposed to formal announcement from big companies. Cool. Great. Thank you, guys. <laughs>